CTV News at 5 with Hudson Mack. Good evening. Hudson Mack is off tonight. If you worked at the University of Victoria, your personal information may have been compromised. UVic says the personal data from a number of past and present employees was stolen in a break-in over the weekend, including banking and social insurance numbers. The university says the data, along with small, a small amount of cash, checks, and some electronic devices were taken from the Administrative Services Building. UVic says it has notified the Office of the Information and Privacy Commissioner and says it's also working closely with the Sanish Police in the investigation. The facility says it is notifying all of its employees, including those from two years ago. Um, we had uh, uh, laptops and desktop information um, was the electronic information that was, uh, was taken. The, the personal information is our, our biggest concern at this point. We don't know whether there's been any compromising of that personal information, but what was included in there was the names, uh, social insurance numbers, uh, banking information of all individuals at UVic that have received uh, payments over the last two years. So that's obviously our biggest concern. UVic says it is conducting a review of its security measures and says it will implement any recommendations that come out of it. So far it is asking any victims to contact their financial institutions. Some tense moments at a Victoria high rise this afternoon after flames broke out forcing people into the streets. Three engines, a ladder company and a battalion from Victoria and a truck from Sandish responded to the 600 block of Toronto Street in James Bay around 2.30. There were no flames when crews arrived but there was heavy smoke in a unit on the sixth floor. We found heavy smoke. We proceeded to go into the bathroom and in the bathroom we found a little bit of fire, mostly heavy smoke and a wall that was partially opened by plumbers that were working on the pipes. Um, the engine company put the fire out rather quickly and then it was a matter of checking for extension um, into adjoining suites and uh, obviously the suite above. So we had a crew respond to the seventh floor, the suite directly above that and adjoining suites, opened up walls, opened up ceiling and we determined that there wasn't any fire spread at that time. There were no injuries. Victoria Fire is pegging the damage between thirty and fifty thousand dollars. After clearing the smoke, people were allowed back into the building. RCMP in the Cowichan Valley have confirmed the name of the victim killed in a trailer fire on New Year's Day. 19-year-old Joanne Crystal Joe was trapped inside the fifth wheel when it burst into flames. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. Six new vessels will be plying the waters off Campbell River, River and other island communities as part of the DFO's aquaculture industry regulation. The vessels are all part of the BC Aquaculture Regulatory Program. Three will be for auditing and monitoring aquaculture sites. The other three will be used by aquaculture fishery officers for enforcement and compliance inspections. The government says the new conservation and protection vessels will allow fishery officials officers to respond quickly to concerns at farm sites and will also allow them to deploy tethered remote underwater vehicles for site inspections. The monitoring of the of the aquaculture industry and uh, uh, getting people on the water to actually uh, see what's uh, what's taking place. Uh, you know, in, in terms of enforcement around our, our regulations, uh, that's an important thing that uh, if we're going to have a sustainable uh, uh, aquaculture industry, we have to have the uh, proper mechanisms in place to ensure that it is sustainable. In addition to christening the new vessels, the government handed out nearly $1 million in funding for aquaculture projects, including one to develop closed containment technology. Aquaculture production in Canada has increased fourfold over the past 20 years. British Columbia is the biggest contributor to Canada's annual export of farmed fish and seafood. A volunteer group has removed a major eyesore from the waterfront near Campbell River. At the end of December, a derelict vessel washed up at Willow Point after a strong windstorm. The Department of Fisheries and Oceans examined it to make sure it wasn't leaking any fuel, but said whoever owned the boat was responsible for cleaning it up. After nearly two weeks on the waterfront, a local stewardship group decided to remove it. All of these screens uh, collectively are... They're not very big coho producers these days, but they are coho producers, and uh, to allow something like this to go on and just uh, sit back and say, oh, well, uh, there's no problems with it, uh, there's no fuel in it, there's no, uh, um, nothing poisonous about it, it was all wrong, we found fuel in it already. Not very much, but there is fuel. I think it sends the wrong message to leave it there, and we end up with a boat in every day on the island, we weren't careful. The boat will be towed to the city dump and disposed of. The group expects to be reimbursed for the costs of the removal, either by the boat's owner or a government agency.
A major fundraiser for Nanaimo's new emergency room is underway and it gives you the opportunity to win $100,000. Just 5,000 tickets are available in the Lotto for Life. They can be purchased at a number of mid-island locations including Thrifty Foods, Coastal Community Credit Union and RBC locations. The money raised will be used to buy equipment for the hospital's new ER. It's to purchase some equipment for um, our emergency department. As you know, we've been raising $4 million for the emergency, and this money will go specifically to equipment at the uh, department and staying in central Vancouver Island to treat patients here. Tickets are $100 and can be also purchased by calling 250-755-7640.